Coming to you live from downtown Detroit, this is Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep with your host, Joel Conan. This is a volatile puppy here, isn't it? And Dennis Dick. I've been a penny. I will buy the stock for a penny. With everything you need to start your trading day. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this Wednesday edition of Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. I'm Spencer Israel. As always, joined by Joel Elkanen and Dennis Day, coming to you here from very, very snowy and very, very cold Detroit, Michigan. Got a lot of news to get to today, of course. We've got the Fed decision coming out later. We'll talk about that and what trades you should be making ahead of that and how the market will be pricing that in. A lot of ratings changes to discuss as well. Uh, analysts pretty active today. Uh, some big moves in uh, Overstock, the the uh, blockchain slash crypto uh, stock move continues to be a story. We'll discuss that as well. Our guest today, 835, we are going to be joined by Jonathan Corpina. He's a senior managing partner at Meridian Equity Partners. Joel, how are we doing this morning in the S&Ps? Uh, nice range overnight. Uh, we made a low at 59 and a quarter. That was on the Alabama ex uh, election results. We've bounced back, made a new high in the session at 69 even. Our all-time closing high was made yesterday at 67.75. So we'll see if have anybody taken off some profits here ahead of the big Fed decision. Crude was unable to hold its gains from yesterday, sniffed $59, but then came back down to the 57 level. Kind of a yo-yo market in crude, now trading up 45 cents at 57.59. Gold in the green, uh, we've had a $60 sell-off from the $1,300 level, uh, making a higher low this morning. So swing trade perspective, we'll keep an eye on the low from yesterday at 1238.30. Same with silver, up uh, five cents at fifteen at seventy-two. Once again, trying to put in a bottom or you know a swing trade bottom at least from yesterday's session, and trading above seventeen thousand at seventeen thousand three hundred and three fifty. Holding in there is Bitcoin. Uh, the one Dennis was buying yesterday was uh, Litecoin, and uh, that had a real <laughs> big move. That's trading up at three twenty-six oh six. Uh, a little diversification in the uh, cryptocurrency market. Litecoin, I guess, is supposed to be quicker. And uh, you could I do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything light, right? But uh, <laughs> those Bitcoins get pretty heavy in your purse. So I heard the Litecoin, it's the lighter coin. Hey, listen, so I, listen I, I've decided that I'm going to buy some Litecoin today. I'm going to buy a very small amount of Litecoin because. Uh, just I'm basically Did it pull back off those highs. I'm, I'm gonna gamble and buy by like a hundred bucks. You're just game. riding the momentum here. I, Spencer I, just, I, I miss Bitcoin, so I'm I want to catch this one. So I, I'm, I'm gonna throw a small amount of money that I don't mind losing into Litecoin. And I decided that I'm going to buy none of them. Dennis is looking to short it as he informed. I don't know about shorting these things. I know I, I'm sure I'm glad. That I haven't been shorting these things because you know everybody listening to the show for the last year knows I haven't been bullish. I, you know, haven't really been preaching bearish either. I've been on the sidelines. I continue to remain on the sidelines because, again, same reason. I don't know how to value these things or if you can value them. And you know, I'm old school. Like I like to crunch my numbers a little bit. The little CFA in me likes to actually be able to value something before I stick it in my investment portfolio. Can't value them. Can't buy it. And uh, how about the guy that paid 10,000 Bitcoin for two Papa John's pizzas? How do you think? Well, that was a it? mistake. That was a mistake? <laughs> no, I, I think... hope it was good pizza. No, he's come <laughs> out. He's come out since then and said he doesn't regret it, I think. Because that was. Too... Well, it must have been really good pizza. Well, it was in like 2010. So, you know. Yeah, it was 2010. And that was when they had that hamburger pizza, Papa John's. Remember the hamburger pizza they had? It was pretty good pizza. Uh, right, we're, no. we're, we're getting off the they did now. they had the big mac sauce on it, right, it was, i actually tried the hamburger pizza for papa john's that's when it first came out so he probably bought the hamburger pizza with the he had to try the new hamburger pizza with the ten thousand bitcoins and it was pretty good pizza so he didn't really regret the decision and i don't know if i got to announce it no i don't think we knew yesterday but uh peter schiff is going to be joining us uh, it's been a while since peter's been on the show he's going to be joining us on our bitcoin special uh, 
echoing a lot of sentiments uh, that, that uh, Dennis has had. And uh, I <laughs> guess to do his 30 minute podcast and it's good. It's the bear case. You know, Peter's not going to be bullish on, you know, the, and you knew even just knowing if you know Peter, there's no way he's going to be bullish on Bitcoin. So we're going to have some bulls. We're going to have some bears. It's going to be a good show, Joel. I'm, I'm looking forward to it, doing a lot of research, but uh, let's get into uh, the market movers here. We've covered the S&Ps and uh, gold and silver and crude as well, but uh, I guess winner, winner, chicken dinner of the day. Uh, let's go to Finisar. Yeah, Finisar News, Spencer Israel. What's going on? Finisar uh, got uh, $390 million from Apple, so nice investment there. So they're jumping in here, FNSR up significantly. Um, this obviously, what what exactly is parts makers for? They're going to be the parts maker for the iPhone. Is that what it is? Uh, what do they make? What, what I know are, they make what like are they cell phone Apple, parts. What, what specifically do they make? Who are they replacing? Is it light? Because LITE, somebody was just saying, is down in the chat. And I, I, I think that's probably the loser here, right? Lumentum Holdings down seven and a quarter percent. Stock Hunter was saying this. The yeah. Finisar yes. up, light is down. Can confirm that. Uh, I can confirm that that's what's happening in the pre market. <laughs> so looks like from the trading action here that market says, uh oh, for if your own out shares of LITE, because maybe Finisar parts are going to be coming in instead of LITE parts. That's why you see LITE down seven and a quarter percent in the pre market. And Finisar, the big winner. It's one of the big winners. If you look at your winner and loser board scanner on your Benzinga Pro, it's right near the top. FNSR trade up 21%. And uh, things got way overdone, I guess. If uh, Unless you're long, you don't think it was overdone. You had a pre-market high at 25.77 and uh, some volume traded on that spike. Uh, over 170,000 shares. Uh, coming back down and now just finding some port bases, the 15 minute chart, just around the $23 level, 40 cents above that. So stick it with 24, 23, good to go north. Uh, this must have been earnings here when it spiked to a 23.90. So it came off hard off that level, actually had a really bad two days. So now the, all the traders, investors are getting back that gains. Two highs at the twenty-four dollar area. Twenty-four 20, looks huge. Yeah, twenty-four looks huge. But man, the way these markets run, who knows? But we'll be keeping an eye on twenty-four. That's the level of the day here. I'd in, be in the register if I saw that twenty-four level and I had this thing long because it, you know, that's high. Is there right on the kisser a few times there in October? What is the pre-market high, Joel? Oh, way above that, Dennis. Uh, they got over. They got it into the twenty-five handle, up to twenty-five seventy-seven. They always get silly. So it's come off here now. I'm going to say twenty-four is resistance, ignoring the pre-market high. I just got a little bit silly. And uh, I don't know if he's listening, but I think this was a Sean Udall stock. I don't remember when we had. Sean's uh, been hot, he, man. Yeah, yeah. I tell you, you know, Sean was cool for a little bit. He hot lately. Sean yeah. Udall has had some great calls. He had a good, real good year. I mean, he has both Micron. And, and, you know, a lot of the tech ones, he's been bullish Twitter for a long time. It's been coming back. That's Sean Udall. You got to buy those Sean Udall calls. All right. Uh, okay. What else is moving here in the pre -market? All kinds of stuff moving here this morning. Um, a lot of upgrades, downgrades. We'll get to those in a second here. Let's go to our only earnings stock, and we'll get that out of the way. It is Verifone from last night. Cool symbol, P-A-Y. Not cool stock this morning, though. Trading down a buck in the pre-market. Spencer, what are the details? Yep, Verifone reporting uh, Q4 adjusted EPS of 44 cents. That beat by a penny. Sales of 477 versus 472.5 million dollars. So five million dollar beat on the sales. They also announced a hundred million dollar buyback. Their guidance for uh, Q1 came in uh, very light. Their uh, for the EPS sales guidance came in very light as well. Fiscal year EPS and fiscal year sales guidance also very, very light. So very, very poor guidance. When are these guys uh, going to start accepting Bitcoin? <laughs> I would kickstart the stock, no? I, I mean, come on. Look at the way those stocks rallied yesterday. Certainly a good idea. I think they should be coming out and making an announcement that they're going to accept Bitcoin and this stock would turn right around on a dime. Big range uh, on the uh, headline number. You had a, a move up over 1860, a sharp move down to 1626. But uh, for now, I'll just be we're traded down a buck 17 and 1730. 
Uh, my level, we're still above 1680, 1684. You poked your head down there a couple times, got under 17 a couple other times. So let's see if buyers reemerge at 1680. That's uh, 60 cents away from here. If we do go into rally mode somehow, uh, we got a ways to go to fill the gap from yesterday at 18 and a quarter. Jump over here to other news. Uh, I, let's talk the Fed because we're going to get the interest rate decision here later today. Uh, Jimmy A in the chat saying there's a 93% chance of a hike. I'm going to say it's almost 100%. I don't see any way they don't hike here today. And I think, you know, the banks are expecting it now. Uh, it's all going to be about what they say going forward that will make the stocks move either up or down after two o'clock. But we talked about it yesterday. The bank's looking to run ahead of this. They did like yesterday. So anybody who was buying in the pre-market yesterday was rewarded. And Bank of America had a good day. JP Morgan up, you know, getting close near the highs. Citigroup had a good day. Morgan Stanley had a great day breaking out. Morgan Stanley is up another 50 cents again here today because it's catching an upgrade from KBW. Uh, there is just a lot of uh, banks that are looking hot right now. That being said... Even if they raise interest rates, so don't just expect the banks to go higher. It's all about the tone of what they're going to say going forward that is going to dictate the move, not the fact that they're raising the rates. Beforehand, though, maybe the run continues, and that's what it looks like this morning. And Dennis, what about uh, we haven't heard the big bank's name in a while? Impressive price action yesterday in Goldman? Yeah. Goldman, that's not, yeah, that's a new 52-week high for Goldman, right? It's an all-time wait, but that's not the way you say it. Is that an all-time high for Goldman? It is all-time high, but that's uh, not the Goldman's way. all the way back. Forty-nine dollars in the financial crisis. If you just closed your eyes and bought gold, there you and sacks. exactly. You're ace if you're listening. I did it for you. Two hundred and fifty-seven dollars. You'd be up a cool four hundred percent on your money. Ring. Uh, when I went on a chicken dinner, yeah, Goldman Sachs trading up in the pre market here, uh, up a buck 22 at 58.90, 59 and a quarter. That's your pre market high. These are uncharted waters, so uh, be careful. Uh, my like level, I'm never, I never really thought you know, because it's chart uncharted waters. I like that. We should say <laughs> that more often. I don't think on the four years we've been doing the pre pre market show, you've ever said these are uncharted waters. <laughs> well, I think I have. We could I like that. Uncharted we waters. Spencer, could you go through all the shows going back to 2014 and see if I've uh, ever said that? Uh, I'll, I'll get old intern Dylan to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Dylan, you're on that. We wanted the report by later this afternoon. Uncharted uh, waters. Uh, level of the day, 57.68. That was your all-time closing high. The other thing I thought was impressive, and I don't know who mentioned this in the chat when they uh, when it made through that all-time high, the last time it did, and that might have been on the, the the big decline in the market, but we got up to 54.90 and then caught a major cold and ended the session at 50.65. Uh-uh, not this time. You busted through that all-time high and you closed above it. So 257.68, all-time closing high in Goldman Sachs. Goldman Sachs, I'll just tell you in the book, when I look at it, the only level of significance is the big whole number of 260. I see 17,000 shares offered there, which is significant for a $260 stock. Because if you think, well, that's like a, you know, a $26 stock, that's like 170,000 shares. So that's a big offer, 17,000 shares for a $260 stock. That could potentially put a lid on it. We're trading the 258 handle here right now. Uh, but, uh, you know, this market just seems to take out all those big sellers there. So be careful if you're shorting Goldman Sachs. All right. What else we got here? SPs just hanging, just unchanged Morgan, here. Just before we leave, let's Morgan? Talk Morgan. Yeah, because Morgan had a great day too. And MS is also trading up another 44 cents. They did get upgraded this morning at KBW. Uh, this, this is not an all time high for Morgan Stanley. Oh, no, 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 no. No. Nope. Where's Morgan's back in the before the financial crisis? How high was Morgan Stanley? Wasn't they like 80 bucks or something? Uh, higher than that, man. This thing used to be a fun, fun issue to trade. But Back in September of 2000, you had a 9131 print, but in, in, in 2000, so 17 years ago, we were 91 bucks. Yeah. Ooh, buy and hold as long as you don't buy during the tech bubble. <laughs> <laughs> it did. I mean, it did had you know it did have a big decline in 02, rallied back in 05, 06, and then you know what happened in 07, 08, 09. Uh, but yeah, 9131. So if you're looking for some meat on the bone and you think, you know, this is uh, 
going to, you know, catch up. Goldman's come all the way back. This one's been a laggard, but uh, certainly had a nice move. Uh, it just cleared a triple monthly top. Oh, that was a ways back. That was at the 40, $45 level. No, excuse me. 52 was a major breakout from the 08 highs. Now bases the monthly chart. Where are we at here? We're above 53.40. 55.39, if I had to have a number. That was your high back in December of 2007. Let's go to Tesla. This has been a big move. We talked about it yesterday on the show that it was hot. It remains hot. Gains another 10 bucks there yesterday. Uh, $300, five trading sessions ago. It's now 340. Now it's run a little bit too far, but I just look at all this momentum. And the brick wall is up at 360. There's not that much in here until then, but you know, you look at all those highs we had back in September and October, we had that ugly head and shoulders. The left shoulder was back at the end of August, early September. That was up at 360. Then it broke out and put the head way up at 389, then formed the right shoulder at 360. If it ever gets back up to 360, I think you find a wall of sellers. We're 19 bucks away from there now. I don't know if it can get there in the next few days. It looks like that's where it wants to go, but I'm not chasing it here because risk reward is no longer there. Okay. All right. I, Tesla, would, I, would, no. I would be trying to short at 360 though. If I got it. Yeah. Look at, I mean, it, it gave you how many shots to buy between 300 and 310. Yep. And we have had two longstanding bulls, uh, at, in this issue, uh, one, uh, Gene Munster, right. You have known the uh, mega interviews, but, uh, I don't know. Can we put uh, Jason? What day was Jason on the show last week? Do you remember? Oh, uh, yeah, and he yeah. said he was thinking about adding to it. I think he was actually on. We should go find that because I think he was bullish right down around that 300 bucks. Yeah. yeah. Jason yeah. Rasnick is hot right now too. Sean Udall and Jason Rasnick calls. That's what we need to buy. Do you guys, oh, guys uh, want to see? Monster too. Do you, you want to see Gene the list? Do you want to see the list of all the companies that, that we know of who have bought Tesla semi trucks? Or do you want me to read? Yeah, I do. No, yeah. yeah. Are we doing okay. Pepsi? What they buy? hundred trucks? All right, I'll start from... Uh, this, first of all, before you go to this, is every time they get an order for a semi-truck, the stock going to pop 10 bucks? Because yes. if it is, if it is, then we need to buy Tesla. Because they're going to get a lot more orders. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Pepsi bought uh, 100 Tesla semis. Uh, Cisco, S-Y-Y, they bought 50. Anheuser-Busch bought 40. J.B. Hunt also bought 40. Uh, Lablo uh, companies, they bought 25. Walmart bought 15. DHL uh, bought Why is 10. Why Walmart so weak? I, I don't know. Uh, Only but, 15 trucks? Come on. Well, oh, I guess they're going online. Well, yeah, but they should have more trucks then. What's going on? I, I don't know, uh, but the only other public companies uh, Step in, it up. an undisclosed <laughs> amount was purchased by Ryder, ticker R, uh, but that's it. Ryder, they bought the most. They didn't want anybody to know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and people buy those semi trucks. Look at this Tesla, man. They're diversified now. That's just a car maker. They're a truck maker, too. They you know, the old, not, uh, I mean, the only thing I can say is they're getting the orders, but can they deliver them? They'll deliver. They can make a hundred semi trucks. I don't know if they can make ten thousand, but they can make a hundred. So they're delivering. We're gonna they're gonna be good for that. But that's always been the argument too, especially on the car front, is again the infrastructure built in. But you see these, you know, charge stations popping up all over the place here now. I mean, they're building that infrastructure for it. Where was I? I can't remember. I was just somewhere about a week ago, and there was Tesla charge stations there too. It seems like everywhere I look, there's Tesla charge stations are popping up. They're trying to build the infrastructure, take over the world. Yeah, infrastructure and production facilities. Haven't heard much about that, but uh, you know, you could much easier to build a a power station than it is to you know build a manufacturing facility. And I don't know. I kind of thought they had, might have made an acquisition by now uh, to you know try and uh, speed up the production, but uh, seems like they're trying to do it on their own. Jump back over. So Disney Fox, is this getting it done here today or what? Because every single day I hear about this, I heard David Faber yesterday on CNBC saying, probably going to get done Thursday morning. It's Thursday. No, it's not Thursday morning. Thursday. I'm getting my days mixed up. It's Wednesday morning. So we're saying tomorrow. Is that what we're finally going to say here? The Disney Fox saga is over because I'm sick of hearing about it. It's only been like three weeks. <laughs> been longer. Well, maybe. Let's go look at the Fox chart. It's only been like three weeks. 
Come on. No, it's been over a month because it's popped the first day back in November 24, 30 to 26, 85. That's when the rumors started back on November the 6th. So I've now listened to this for almost four and a half weeks, Spencer. Right. And uh, <laughs> not much of appreciation now, right? This, uh... I think it's all priced in. Um, I have a day trade on Fox right now, but that's about it. So no no opinion from a swing trading perspective here. I want to see what the price is. But again, I'm a little worried that it could be the whole buy on rumor, sell on news thing. Because there is some big premium priced in the Fox here. And yeah, Disney there's... keeps popping too, but Disney has a lot of you know catalysts here right now. We got the big Star Wars movie coming out, so they're going to announce. You know, maybe they are setting up to this. Going to announce the Fox deal and come out with Star Wars on the same day. Is that what they're doing? <laughs> what day are you tomorrow? Right? Yeah, yep, uh... tomorrow it's tomorrow night. Yep. What What time does Disney start or does the Star Wars movie? Is it to tomorrow night or is it tomorrow at like a twelve a.m.? Do we know when it's, Star Wars actually like is thir- going to? It's like to... Thursday at midnight. Thursday, so it's basically Friday. Uh, right. Let me what con- are you going, Dennis? Are you taking to watch it? I'm not going to watch till next week, but I do want to watch it. I'm a Star Wars fan. Are you going to watch it, Joel? Have you even watched any of the Star Wars movies? <laughs> I, I don't even think Joel's watched the Star Wars movies. Do you know I... who Darth Vader is? <laughs> Yeah, James Earl Jones went to Michigan. Wait, I lied. It's actually not I mean, It's just tomorrow. It's just tomorrow night. It's just regular times tomorrow night. So like oh, it's seven o'clock. Star Wars. I'm see, I'm seeing it Saturday morning at ten a.m. Awesome. Yeah. You're seeing it Saturday morning, ten a.m. Yep. You're buy your ticket. Oh yeah. And I no, heard it's good. No one's gonna it's go. It's because it's who goes to the theater at Saturday morning. No one. So no one will be there, and I'll be by myself, and it'll be great. So it'll be packed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right. Let's get, let's get back to it. All right. Back to Disney stock and Fox. So, okay. Fox, we know a lot of the good news already priced in, but the House of Mouse here showing a lot of life as well. Kramer was giving it love there last night. He was bullish and the stock popped the buck because Kramer is bullish as well. Although Kramer has been bullish every time he talks about it. So I don't know why it's up another dollar because he said he was bullish again. But Kramer moved stocks. Mad Money featured it and then popped the buck on the Mad Money feature. Thoughts on DIS. We've been running a lot here. Well, actually, we just look like we're going to start running again after we had the big pop. What was that big pop? I know. I was just going to ask that. I that remember was... that went up to 112. What, 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 what made that, Spencer? What, what made that thing go up to 112? I have the goldfish memory totally on you, this one. You're talking, I do you're talking about that. from two weeks ago? Yeah. Was that earnings? The fourth. Uh, the... No, it wasn't earnings. It, it was the earnings. Fourth. That was. Spencer, use the fourth. Mm. Nobody catches that joke. Nobody even laughs. No, no, I got it, but I didn't laugh. <laughs> what was your joke? <laughs> Joel doesn't get that because he doesn't know what the force is. <laughs> okay. I know what the force is. Right. I don't. Uh, I thought it was witty. I thought it was witty on that. On December fourth, yeah. there was a Bloomberg report that uh, Fox favored Disney as a buyer more than uh, more uh, more than uh, uh, anyone else. Well, that was silly. All right, it went up to 112.67. I'm going to say the 110 is the resistance point here now just because you had that little yep. pesky hop afterwards. So that's the level I'm using. But, you know, there's a Fox deal coming. There's a Star Wars movie coming. It's all likelihood I think it's going to test that 110. 110.04, uh, that was your high on December 5th. And what makes that a good number as well is on that big day when you ran from uh, a 105 and a quarter to 110.22, that was your close. You opened lower Tried to rally up, tried to get green on the session, found sellers at 110.04, so 110 to 1, 110.04, 110.22, potential sell zone, uh, the high on December 4th, way above that at 112.67. Where do you want to go? We got 10 minutes before our guest. I've got ratings to talk about. We'll have imbalances at 830. We got WDC finally settling up with Toshiba. There's lots to talk about here. Where do you want to go? I'm going to let you, one of you guys lead the way. Uh, let's go to Western Digital. Uh, John Dotson made a great call in this and our own Bear, uh, Benzinga pre-market chat. Dennis, I mentioned Did you hold you. it? I, I did. You talked me out of it. And I think I, I put that in there. I mean, I've, I've given it a couple days. It did dip under 80. But, uh, man, we've been getting uh, some great suggestions out of John Dotson and a few other people uh, staying in the chat during the day. So keep an eye on that during the session, looking for intraday trading ideas. 
it did it man yesterday it broke out over uh 79 dollars you had a triple top there but uh never got a chance to look at that uh you know buying on support again trading up in the pre-market you did have a spike up to 86.39 a lot of air in this thing 86.49 that was your high on november 29th let's just call it 86.50 resistance level if it gets there another buck and a half but if this just gets back into the 90 handle dennis i don't know i might have to look again i mean this 80 to 90 period is kind of kind of being nauseated maybe there's somewhere else to put my money buy some uh more put some more money in twitter or something but uh so the news is the settlement spencer oh yeah is that what it is we uh we're done uh, finally, finally, you, 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 you this want, you has want... been popping the stock and dropping the stock and popping the stock and dropping the stock. So it's over. You can play about... over. They've settled. So you complain about uh, Fox Disney. This has been going on for like years. <laughs> years. OK, so uh, we're done. All right. I, I'm going to say this, you know, getting a nice pop on this three box. Uh, 85 looks big to me here, too. I don't know, Joel. I think I'm I'm ringing the register if I was in this thing here uh long term you, know, you have just... a long term so i don't know long term but short term this thing just popped up significantly here we're passing the 50 percent retracement of the recent move 93 went down to 76 what's that air math like 17 bucks pop up nine i mean that's right where we're at right, yep. right around that 50 percent here 85 i think in there there's actually some type of iceberg seller there at 85 here too i have seen this a lot of times where they get the nice pop on some settlement and give it back. So uh, as a day trade, I'm a more of a fader of the 85 I agree. level, I think. I agree. Uh, Long term, who knows? Uh, different We're time. a short-term show. <laughs> Try and do a little bit of both. Uh, hubs, uh, H-U-B-S for Johan Smith um, in the chat. Hub spot, interesting chart. Bolted off 73.15 and has ran into some problems at the $84 level. I'll just give you the last three highs 364 even and 380. Call it a triple top. Uh, closed down at 82.70, but you're finding support in the 82 handle as well. So maybe look to see which way it goes. A breakout over 84. You got some more distance at least to 85. Your November 8th high. Now, look out if we take out yesterday's low at 82.15. I could easily see us trading in a $79 handle, four day low, 79.75. Ratings land. So, we talked about the banks. The banks, there's four of them getting an upgrade this morning from KBW Morgan Stanley, STT, Zion, and STI. Those are the four getting uh, bags. I have day trades on STT and ZION. I said Z for all you American listeners and Z for the Canadian listeners out there. Um, that That's just full disclosure. All right. I mean, which we one? Morgan you... Stanley already. We talked oh. Morgan. Yeah, these things are going to lift just because some of the other banks are lifting a bit here too this morning. That STT, I mean, this thing's run a long ways. Hunter Fox? Like, I don't think, I don't know if it gets there, but man, there's some resistance up there. I'll tell you, I'll be selling before then, probably. You giving me an upgrade now? It's late uh, to the party. I, yeah. Completely I, agree. Yeah. I mean, it's just a little bit, you know, kind of a little bit too much. Late to the party. I mean, for a bank up 33% for the year, uh, but going up against all time highs. Uh, that old time high in State Street, kind of a, a thin, thinner, not like trades a million shares, but uh, you had an all time high back in October in 99.89. A couple other highs in the upper 99 handle, actually one, two, three, four. So, like, yeah, 100 bucks. It's still a buck 75 away from there. Uh, knocking on the door for the fifth time since October. So, it might have the momentum to get through, but. Uh, just, uh, you know, a little bit too much, too fast here. Also, you know, look to see if, uh, you know, they can get up over 100. They take out a big seller, right? I and, mean, you know, let's say a couple hundred thousand. And then whoever's buying it on a breakout there has nowhere to go. And boom, if you're playing it on a breakout over 100 like that, just be real careful. It doesn't tick like 1008 and then all of a sudden you're back at 99.75. 
your big bold call of the day is coming from Bank of America. They are downgrading Ralph Lauren to underperform, putting an $80 price target on it. And that is why the stock is down two and a half bucks here in the pre-market. Uh, 97.50 is the offer here right now too. So looking weak here this morning, Ralph Lauren and just talking retailers overall, XRT had an ugly day yesterday. Um, you know, if you look at the retail ETF, it put in a, kind of like a triple top from the last yep. three days and then closed down. I think, you know, a lot of people are talking about how, how hot the retail stocks are. I think they're all late to the party. I think the retail rally is starting to top out. I said this a few days ago and it did pull back for a couple of days there, but they came back up. And, you know, a lot of these retail stocks are actually giving you a shot near the highs here right now. I think I'm a seller of retail stocks, the traditional okay. retailers. Okay, uh, let's just take a look at the Ralph Lauren. It's had a real nice rally since bottoming in October at 83.26. We have now taken out yesterday's low. Uh, we've also 97.62. I think that's going to be your level of control. If you haven't taken that out yet, uh, 97.62, look out. Your four-day low is 95 even. And this thing moves like if you if you're like trying to pick a bottom off this thing off the open, if it's not 25, 30 cents your way very quickly, I think you're going to be in trouble on this one. Uh, another, you know, possible trade. Let's say they take it lower. They pound it down to 95 or 94, 80. Then you might could get a bounce there. But uh, just kind of a thin stock. People sitting on a lot of profit since October. So uh, hands off on the log side on this one. We just got a number here, and the banks actually got the beats on it. So banks were all trading in the green before this number, and they actually just – a lot of them gave it back, although we are trying to calm down here now. I know TLT popped way up here too on this number that just happened. Spencer, what do we get? Uh, Economic I, numbers. Yep, I'm seeing a U.S. CPI uh, for November uh, in line with the estimate, though, uh, uh, point, uh, point 0.4. The estimate was, was point 0.4, so um, I'm not sure what – what is doing there but that's the number that i saw the cpi that's it that's it uh maybe bad for the banks but uh, they're still uh, popping green uh bad for the banks good for the spoos though uh spoos up making a new high for the session here at, around. yeah 68 75 uh the only number we have on the upside is 73 even that was your all-time high that was made in yesterday's session Old time closing high, 67.75. Yeah, TLT really popped on this. It was trading at 126 this morning. It just popped up 60 cents here. So, again, watch, you know, interest rate sensitive stuff. We're still bouncing around on interest rate day here. Let's go look at imbalances, see if there's anything jumping out to me. There's a few, eh, but it's pretty small again. I don't know. It's been disappointing. Square, 57000 to buy. SQ is just hanging out here. And I don't even know what to say about this chart anymore because you have the biggest battle between the bulls and the bears on SQ. Resistance is forming up here just under 40 bucks. You got four of the last five days highs. Right in that 39, like 79 area, 39, 64, 39, 77. So just under that. And then the lows are all in the same area too, like 37.93, 37.94, So call it like 38 to 40, 37 and a half to 40. Ooh, boy, Maybe oh go with the winner or something. Yeah, a lot of resistance here uh, up in the upper 39 handle. One, two, three, four, five highs within a 25 cent range. Got up there yesterday. And now the last four lows just at the $38 level. Winding up here, you got to think after this kind of run up and then this big decline and now this consolidation, man, oh, man, tech's been weak lately until this thing could uh, clear 40 bucks with a couple closes. I think be uh, more inclined to look at this uh, for a continuation of that move lower. I mean, if you're sitting on this since December of last year, you're sitting on a winner. 13.63 was the last trade in December uh, of last year. So still over a double. We'll see if uh, it can get back whole 40. And then the recent low of the move here in square did quite get to that $35 area we were talking. It did get in a 35 handle. Major support at 35.90. That was your December 4th low. We're talking about the CPI number. If somebody was just asking me, that just uh, messaged me there. CPI number here that just came home. Uh, 834, right. It's 834, Spencer. though. Yep, 834. So let's go grab our guest for the day, Jonathan Corpina. He is his senior managing partner at, at Meridian uh, Equity Partners. We always uh, 
call Jonathan from the floor of the NYSC. So we're pumped to get him on uh, in a moment. And we'll be uh, right back with Mr. Corpina in one second when I can get his uh, his number. There we go. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep. Spencer Israel, Joel Khan, and Dennis Thick, and we're on the line with Jonathan Corpina, Senior Man- Managing Partner at Meridian Equity Partners. John, how's it going today? Gentlemen, good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming. Hey. Yep, go for it. Hey, Jonathan, uh, working on the floor there, the New York Stock Exchange. I can remember uh, my floor days at the CME. And that seemed to be always a place where you got some good jokes and new jokes coming out. Has there been any uh, any that you could tell on Benzinga's pre-market prep show that you'd like to share with us? You know, nothing uh, nothing too in particular. I think all the uh, all the jokes we've been talking about down here have been, all, been focused around Bitcoin and the activity that we've seen there. And and uh, you know, guys pretending that they that they bought it a long time ago and probably sold it too early, but uh, nothing nothing uh, joke wise that really uh, stands okay. out. Okay. Okay. Well, you opened up a can of worms here, starting uh, Bitcoin, uh, the GBTC, the uh, ETF is traded there. I'm not sure if you're getting uh, many orders. You've been around the floor, been around the markets for quite some time. Uh, just give us uh, your quick appraisal of this mania. I mean, clearly it's um, it's something that we've all been watching, and I think everyone's really trying to get their hands around it because if you look back at the the progression of this story over the last uh, over the last year, couple of years, you know, at first there was really no legs to it, and people weren't you know, quote unquote, buying into the whole story of it. But as it continues to move higher and higher, and as the media continues to concentrate and focus on it, it clearly has become a household topic. Um, I, I, for one, have still um, my reservations about it, um, just as far as, the, you know, this this entity, it's, it's unregulated. You can't really short it at this point. It's, there's, there's a whole, you know, crypto world that's behind this. This might, in fact, be real, and it might be the next real form of currency. But at this point, I have not been fully convinced um, that that is what it is. And every once in a while, when I start to sway a little bit, we get headlines that come out as far as comments from the SEC, comments from you know major heads like JP Morgan, stuff like that that kind of reel me back in to, to understand that uh, there's still plenty of reservation out there from smart people. Yeah, sticking with the fundamentals, I mean, a new asset class, I mean, when's a new asset class uh, being created? Uh, kind of steep for, you know, a steep uh, prediction on it, but uh, that's what the bulls and bears are sticking to. Just uh, for your uh, information, next Tuesday, we're going to devote an entire show uh, to Bitcoin. We're going to have some bulls, some bears, some traders, some academics just banging it out. So a lot of good information on that. Uh, Let's just talk about year end. I mean, you're a money manager. You're sitting on some nice profits stalemate in Washington as far as policies and stuff. I mean, 
it's hard to sell here. This market keeps going up. I mean, we just going to clear 2,700 in the S&Ps or some boys you can look in, uh, just book some few profits, take a deep breath, have a good time at your New Year's party, and then uh, reassess 2018. Yeah, you know, I think I would love a good um, have someone give me a good excuse or good reason as to why this this market rally is not going to continue. Um, if you look at the way we've traded all throughout the year, um, you know, S and P has blown through every single level that we've we've decided to 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 think was a was a a, a resistance level, up close to twenty percent plus on the year. Um, I think investors have kind of taken some profits off the table and you've got those ones who are pretty much locked it down and said, you know what, I'm going to watch this whole thing just kind of play itself out and see where we lead into 2018. Um, you've got the ones that have, uh, have been on the sidelines just waiting and watching and they've, they, they've missed their opportunity many different times. And at this point it's, it's way too late for them to get in the game. So they too have said, you know what, it's 2018 for me when I'm going to, when I'm going to get back into, into really looking and focusing on this market. As we say that participation, levels have lightened up, which means that we've had a little bit more um, you know, one-way volatility to this market as it continues to trade higher. I don't expect too much um, to really move this market in the, in the remaining you know, two and a half weeks of, uh, of our year here. There'd be really no um, incentive for anybody to either you know, take some cash that's been sitting on the sidelines and put it in now, or take as much as you can off the table because there's just at the end of the day, the, the overall momentum is going higher. Um, but the beginning, the first quarter of 2018 is really going to be interesting. Rotation, rotation, rotation. We've been talking about uh, out of the tech stocks and into the value stocks. Now I don't want to make uh, too much of a stretch here on the retail sector. And maybe you could give me the perspective, you know, a stock like Macy's gets down near $20 yielding I don't, well, under 20, actually gotten a 17 handle yielding seven, eight, percent i mean are the institutions are the big boys are they coming in for a trade here you know get look at the dividends some downside protection some price appreciation or is there just a fundamental view that you know we've hit a multi-year low and these things are turning around i'm not saying macy's going back to 70 bucks or anything but you know are the institutions hedge funds are these in the in these for a trade or you think they're in for the long haul you know, I think when you look at the uh, the retail sector there and how that's all played out, and whether you're talking about, um, you know, larger brick and mortar companies or some of these some of these um, these budding online companies, um, this sector clearly has had a lot of pressure on it. And I think from the institutional side, they've been waiting and watching to see how this is going to play out. And like you said, you know, is Macy's going to get back up to 70? It traded as low as, what, 18 and a half, 19 this year. I don't think 70 is in the near future. <laughs> um, but I think, some, I think some of the smart money has realized that the fundamentals beside, behind some of these larger retail companies um, have enough strength and have enough support that it's worth – getting into it at these levels and at the, at the low levels that we've seen, because how much lower is it really going to go? If it goes much lower, someone's coming, going to come in and buy it out. And then if it continues to bounce off the lows and move higher, then you're going to, you're going to uh, participate in that wave that's there. Um, as we get towards the end of the year, obviously retail sector is something that we focus on right back in September, you have back to school and now we've got, um, you know, the holiday season. So retail numbers coming out. I don't think that is going to be a market mover. It might just be a little bit of an indication of how people, People are spending their money. Um, but once again, um, you know, not to punt this to 2018, but once we start getting some of the fourth quarter 2017 numbers in that retail area, um, I, I think it will give us a better indication of how people are spending their money, where people are spending that money, and if that sector, um, especially from the brick and mortar side, can continue. Jonathan, let's go back to the rotation here and just talk fang facebook amazon netflix and google and this has been a weird market because it seems like you've got this separation that has happened here now and it seems like when fang is having a good day a lot of your other value stocks are having a bad day and when they're having a good day fang is having a bad you know so it's it's weird because it wasn't like that before it was like fang was driving everything before and it's like now money goes into fang and and out of other stocks or comes in a fang and goes into other stocks. So basically just talking growth tech versus everything else. Um, you know, there was one day, you know, last month, I remember the Qs where the NASDAQ was down like 2% and the Dow was up like one and a half percent. 
It's been a long time since we've seen markets like that. Yeah, you know, definitely there are these these anomalies where we see these disconnects. It seems like Fang has really become its own sector, um, and 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 definitely has some tentacles to other areas. But by standing alone, um, I think people have 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 definitely focused on it. When you look at Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Investors feel comfortable with those stocks. They're very familiar, right? I mean, how much time do people spend on Facebook and on Netflix? You're using Google as your search engine and, and, and your mail. Your Amazon is providing you many different services. I think the average American really understands um, the front end product and the, and the front end um, um, you know, value of these stocks. So I think that's, they feel very comfortable when investing into this area and this new quote unquote, you know, fang sector. We don't see a correlation, um, you know, all the time when these stocks start to move and, and, and the tech sector or the retail sector, um, you know, the social media sector don't always trade step and step with it. I think these four stocks are really stand on their own. And I think, um, you know, from an investing point of view, people have really um, tightened their scope to this, to this, uh, to this little core group. And just jumping over here to, uh, we talked Bitcoin just briefly off the hop of the show, but you know, gold here, and they're saying Bitcoin's a new digital gold. Gold is just like in a free fall. Last month, it's been going straight down, called opposite of Bitcoin, whatever you want. Um, there just doesn't seem like anybody that wants to buy gold. I mean, it's defensive. The market's been going straight up. People are saying Bitcoin's a new digital gold. You don't need that anymore. What's it going to take to turn gold and silver around? You know, unfortunately, I think we're going to need a uh, we're going to need, you know, two things for that to happen. One is, um, you know, a, a real negative headline on cryptocurrencies, whether there's been a, um, you know, a technology floor, whether there's been a uh, security breach uh, and, and people start to, you know, peel away the layers of the of the onion here and think that they're that really that that whole area isn't as solid as it is. Um, and, you know, the, the other unfortunate headline might be, you know, a geopolitical headline. North Korea headlines continue to, to you know, creep forward um, in our cycle and then pull back something, something that might escalate there then might bring investors to the, to the forefront of we need to get back into, into gold. We're on the line with Jonathan Corpina from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. I uh, just want to talk about one value stock that really hasn't moved here. <laughs> it's moved. It's moved down. Uh, General Electric uh, getting uh, some favorable comments here from uh, Larry Bossidy, who is the retired chairman of CEO Honeywell. And we all can remember the old suppose the old potential merger between Honeywell and GE. Uh, here you have a situation. You're putting in a multi-year low. You know, with the 1750 area running into trouble at 18 here, little bit of a dividend. Uh, just give us your, your thoughts for uh, General Electric in 2018. Yeah, look, you 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 look at the way GE has traded from the beginning of uh, of 2017 up to the you know 31, 32 dollar level down to where it is now. GE, um, you know, GE has become a diner. In, in 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 some respect, right? They've 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 had their hands in every single area um, of our economy and, and our uh, and, and production, even in finance. And I think once you get to be such a large conglomerate, right? And you can you can argue that um, you know Amazon is is on this path of growing more and more. I think they have a different type of mindset and different type of model. But GE, you know, kind of became a, a little bit of, of something to everybody. And they weren't very um, particularly profitable in all the different areas that they got into. And they've been going over years and years of just scaling back on non-profitable businesses, trying to close down certain silos and try to get back to their core business. Unfortunately, while you do this, your stock is going to reflect exactly that. And that's where that's at at this point. But you look at GE and you say to someone, you know, you can own GE at, at $18. Where is it really going to go from here? Is it going to 12? I don't think so. Or 15. I think the upside potential is clearly there. Um, some regulatory issues, some personnel issues that have really um, come to the forefront there. So as, as they continue to chip away at at uh, at the uh, layers of GE, I think the value is clearly still there. The dividends there. And it's something that I think investors can still feel comfortable uh, putting money into. Oh, before you let you go, two issues coming from our chat. Uh, and if you don't follow these, just let me know. Uh, ML32 is asking about overstock.com. 
a uh, blockchain stock, wild price appreciation? Is this something that you follow? OSTK? Uh, it, it is not an area. I just, you know, I clearly that I follow, but <laughs> the whole the whole blockchain concept, um, you know, as, as cryptocurrency continues to rise and come to the headlines here um, and, and everybody is talking about it. And whether you're on Wall Street or Main Street, it's, it's clearly a, uh, a hot topic. Um, you know, the, the companies that are investing in, forming in and, um, and collaborating with, um, you know, blockchain stocks and blockchain companies um, are clearly going to ride that wave. Just be prepared that if that wave stops, um, you know, you're going down with it, too. One more Roku uh, off the IPO didn't do much exploded. Uh, Andrew Laff has tried to walk it down here. I guess alternative to TV. Any thoughts on Roku? You know the the um, the way people watch TV now has changed dramatically over the last six months. You know you don't even have to say the last two years. Um, you know Roku is definitely a name that has tried to establish itself in that area. It's just it's so tough that competition that's there um, with Netflix and Amazon. There are just monsters that you're getting into the ring with, and they're going to need some some real capital behind them to, to step up their, their marketing and their media presence. Because at the end of the day, everybody knows Netflix, everybody knows Amazon. And, and those two, those two powerhouses can really continue to take over this area. Jonathan Corpina, senior managing partner at Meridi Equity Partners, talking to us live from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Thanks a lot, Jonathan. Have a great end of the year. We'll be talking to you early in 2018. Thanks for your time, guys. He he probably had some jokes, but he probably couldn't tell them uh, on our radio show, Dennis. They're all clean. You know, they're no dirty <laughs> jokes on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Those guys are all clean down there. Yeah, okay. All right, Dennis. We are approaching uh, the uh, end of our show here in about eight minutes. And uh, they must have liked that CPI number. They don't care about the election in Alabama. Spoo's trading up two and a half at 70 and a quarter. That's one tick off the high of the day. Uh, there's only one level I can give you, and that's the high from yesterday at 73 even. Uh, not sure if we got through all the imbalances. I don't know if you want to talk about the banks here going a little bit. Red. Yeah, the, the, the only stocks that really got hit on that number are the banks. The banks are, are showing some weakness. They were trading up fairly significantly this morning. I know Bank of America is up near 29.50, and it's now trading 29.29. So they got hit a little bit on the CPI number. A little maybe, you know, they're thinking, oh, well, maybe they won't go with this number. They're still going to go here, I think. I don't think that's going to change that we just have a CPI number that, you know, maybe a little lighter than, you know, what they thought might have happened. But um, if you're just looking, that's the only sector really getting hit on. The TLT popped. The, the Qs popped on it. The SPY popped on it. The banks started getting hit. And the banks just move opposite to the TLT. I mean, you keep your TLT on your screen, and it tells you so much about you know where your banks are going to go. Rarely you're going to see a day where the TLT is popping and the banks are popping as well. So keep an eye there. Bonds obviously getting a little bit of a bid here this morning after that CPI number. And banks showing a little relative weakness, but these trades can reverse in a hurry as well. And mm -hmm. banks aren't that weak here. Morgan's still trading in the green, of course. It got upgraded here today. Goldman's still slightly in the green here. JP Morgan, well, Goldman's going to be offered actually in the red. Not a lot, just when JP Morgan's trading down, City and Bank of America are all trading down, but they're not down much. So jury is still out here we don't have clear like yesterday it was fairly clear that the banks wanted to get bought and you know techs want to get sold and that's why i reiterated it so much on the pre-market show and that trade really would have worked out for you if you had done those off the open yesterday today not nearly as simple so there is just kind of a mixed market we're only up a couple of handles here uh market's still trying to figure out although if i'm trying to look at a sector the not, uh, the cues are looking a little bit relatively strong here, so tech is starting to catch a little bit of a bit. All right, and uh, just talking about uh, the TLT and these uh, dividend paying stocks, Verizon, Dennis. I mean, is this is a, a is it now a tech Bitcoin stock? This move in Verizon from forty three nine. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm going to wait for some, some whole number. And right now it doesn't look like it's 53, even though we're trading down uh, 53, uh, trading down 16 cents at 53.03. 53.34 was your high from yesterday. Uh, you won't be, you haven't been up in this area since December. Uh, no, excuse me. You're up at 54.83 in January. So huge move though. 
not a great relative performance. Actually, if you look at it, it's almost unched on the year here. So uh, I guess if you're bringing in your your dividends, then uh, you're doing okay. But uh, actually, the the low for the year was at forty two eighty. So big trading range in uh, Verizon of late. Well, that's a that. big move. Yeah, I mean, that is a huge move for uh, nine points in like three weeks for Verizon. Oh man, I'd be ringing the register. When's it go X? Can you see? When's it go X dividend? Can you? you uh, I can go there? look it up. And we know we historically do have these run-ups ahead of the X dividend dates, and then they sell off afterwards. And that has been working, you know, for years and years and years. That trade has been working. Not every single time, not every single quarter, but a lot of times. January 9th, it's going to go X dividend. January 9th. Okay. So you got a little ways yet. So you're still a month away from it. We've had such a run here, though. I don't know. Like, can you expect more of a run up ahead of the X dividend date? It's run so much already. Like, I got to think eventually there's going to be some profit taking in here somewhere, but it's hot right now. All right. Uh, a stock in the news. It hasn't been one of my favorites. HMNY here. Uh, what, what is the news on this? This thing is bouncing around like a yo yo here. It's got Citroned. Oh, I got Andrew six. left price target was too low because when it was like 37 bucks a day, so I see this going to 20. It went there two days. <laughs> and now got? it's at six bucks. I mean, this story is over. Spencer, what's the news on that one there's today? Actually, Trading down a, uh, a 386. There's a lot of news. There was some news yesterday. They, they did it against Citron, like you said. Uh, they also announced a uh, yesterday after the bell a common stock offering, but they didn't disclose how much. Uh, they would be offering exactly uh, this morning. We have uh, some analytics, some some price data uh, from HMNY uh, on on their Movie Pass, uh, and uh, based on the news that was uh, that was yesterday. So eight point two six million uh, Series A units, uh, about nine hundred sixty nine uh, thousand Series B units at six dollars and fifty cents per unit. And uh, the Series A warrants are going to be exercised what seven. That's a mess. I mean, <laughs> when you have a stock that's ten bucks and you got to price it down at six fifty to clear it, you're pricing. You know, a lot of times these things come out with the offerings and they come out, you know, a few percent lower. You're coming out like thirty percent lower on their price on your offering. We know those offering prices act like a magnet. So when they come out with the actual price, the price wants to gravitate down to where the offering price was. 37% down, that offering, you know, 8.26 million. I'm not sure how many units were outstanding. I could actually maybe I just go grab that information. But you're talking, you know, it's an offering that's just too far way below where the, where the price of it was. And that's why it's down. Those offering prices drag those things down to those prices a lot of times. Um, 8.6 million units, 125 million outstanding. So it's not like it's a ton more. You're talking about 6 or 7% dilution, but that price is awful. Dennis, I don't know if you have it available, your resources, but uh, in my pro, I don't have this thing uh, announcing earnings since January of 2014. Do you have, do you have something? No, they, they, no they've... Do, They've had earnings. Uh, oh, on, really? On I don't follow this company at all. I'm sure they've had earnings, though. They're supposed to report every quarter if it's a public company. So, uh, okay. <laughs> all right. I, I think maybe, maybe honestly, I think what it was is they're just so small that they weren't even on our radar. This is not even yeah. on our radar back then before. Yeah. Like this was a stock that was like a dollar, two dollars. Nobody even looked at it until September yeah. of this year when it blasted off from two dollars to $37. And it was the whole movie pass thing and all this. And, you know, that's the buzz. The buzz. And everybody's like, oh, it's a big thing. When you chase these bubbles, when they burst, this is what happens. Like long haul, these things usually come back down to earth and often come from where they came from. And if you think this is going to come all the way back down to where it came from, it's two or three bucks. So if you're buying at six, you're still buying it, you know, relatively high from where it was trading in September. So, you know, there's a good 50% more could fall here if it goes back to where it was trading in September from these $6 lows here. It's so hard. I, you know, all this speculative stuff, you speculative capital only. And that's what I'm saying. I was seeing in my headline, in my Twitter feed, that there's people now more, you know, taking out mortgage on their house to buy Bitcoin. I heard that too. Don't do that. You know, okay, if you want to speculate on Bitcoin, that's one thing. But this is, you know, far from proven here. Speculative capital only. 
you know I'm not a believer in Bitcoin, but you know I've been wrong on that. So maybe it continues to go. Maybe it goes to the one million dollar price tag that this guy on CNBC thought it was going to yesterday, or said yesterday on CNBC. I think this is going to a million bucks. That would give it a market cap of twenty one trillion dollars and be worth ten percent of the entire world's wealth. Because the entire world's wealth, I looked it up, was like two hundred and forty. So you know, so he thinks it's going to be worth ten percent of the world's wealth which I think is absolutely ludicrous to say a statement like that. But, you know, that's my opinion. Anyways, if you have that belief that's going to a million dollars and you want to invest in it, go ahead. But use speculative capital only. Don't take money out of your more, you know, more or mortgage your house to buy Bitcoin because that's how you lose your house. <laughs> and on that note, Spencer, you want to wrap up today's show and preview what's on the docket for I, Thursday? I can do just that, but then uh, what are other imbalances besides Square? That jumped out to you. Uh, 168,000 sell. It's interesting. at and and Verizon are trading down here with the TLT trading up, but there's been that separation as of late. They're kind of their own thing here now. I don't know what, like we've been trying to determine what's, you know, got into at and and Verizon. They're kind of doing their own thing. They're almost like most stocks all of a sudden. Uh, Nike, 54,000 to sell. That's of significant note. Square is 33,000 to buy. The techs are still looking a little bit hot. Disney, 41,000 to buy here this morning. Disney's hot right now. They're going to do that box. They got the Star Wars movie coming i think it could test 110 bucks here today u.s steel which has been hot 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 as well cooling a little bit here this morning uh it's 33,000 to sell had a little bit of a tough candle there yesterday pfizer 50,000 to sell merck 28,000 to buy so those two stocks potentially going in the opposite direction pier one imports pir i own that one just ahead of the earnings report um it's going to report here tonight i threw a little bit in my invest or just in my trading portfolio there, just looking for a run-up ahead of the report it's got 21,000 to buy this morning all right uh that's it for us today folks uh thank you to everyone who joined us on premarket.benzigo.com and those of you who watched us uh, on youtube as well if you want to catch any part of our show again you can do that on our podcast itunes soundcloud and stitcher is where that is located thank you to our guest today jonathan corpina uh, and we've been mentioning it uh, now for a couple weeks, I feel like, but we were doing a, a Bitcoin special. Uh, next Tuesday's show will be just about uh, Bitcoin. We're going to have a number of guests on. It'll be uh, an hour and a half. It'll be a longer show. It'll go until until the open. I'm putting a link now in the uh, pre-market chat where you can uh, register uh, for that webinar. And that link is there uh, right now. And yep, so hope you can join us then if you want to chat about Bitcoin for uh, an hour and a half. And uh, that, that'll be good. But thank you to everyone who joined us today. We'll be back with you folks uh, tomorrow. In the meantime, uh, have a good rest of your day and good luck out there.